Chapter 2 of Going His Way Little Talks to Little Folks by Rev. Gerald T. Brennan. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Maria Therese. Chapter 2 The Wise Servant. Today I want to tell you a story about an old colored servant. His name was Jackson. Well, Jackson had worked in the same house for over thirty years. He helped with the cleaning, waited on table, and cared for the lawn and flowers. While Jackson was a servant, still the old negro felt that he was very important. He felt that he was really a member of the family. Jackson was very kind to everybody, and everyone in the family was kind to him. The master of the house was especially fond of Jackson, and the old servant thought a great deal of his master. It seems that one day the master of the house became very ill. For a whole week everyone in the house talked in whispers, and during all that time Jackson was not allowed to see his master. Day by day the master became weaker and weaker. Then, one day, Jackson heard the members of the family crying. The faithful old negro stood outside his master's door and prayed hard. He wanted his master to get better. Soon the door opened and a doctor came out of the room. "'How is my master?' asked Jackson." and there were tears in his eyes. Jackson, said the doctor, your master has just died. He has gone on a long journey. Your master has gone to heaven. Jackson raised his arms and shook his head. Oh, doctor, he said, I am sorry that my master has gone, but I was afraid that my master has not gone to heaven. But why, Jackson, asked the doctor, what makes you think that your master has not gone to heaven? Oh, I knows my master, said the old negro. When my master go on a journey, he talk about it a long time, and he spends lots of time getting ready. I has never heard my master talk about heaven, and I has never seen my master get ready for heaven either. Jackson was certainly a wise old servant. You know, children, a person who wants to go to heaven not only talks about heaven, but he gets ready for heaven. You can't wish your way into heaven. Oh, no. You must prepare. You must get ready for heaven. Let's suppose that you are going to visit your aunt in Chicago. What do you do? First, you write a letter to your aunt and tell her that you are going to visit her. Then you go over to the station and find out what time the train will leave for Chicago. You ask your father for some money and you buy your train ticket for Chicago. Each day you get something ready for the trip. Your mother washes and irons your clothes. You pack your clean clothes in a bag. For several days you talk about nothing except your trip to Chicago. So many things have to be done before you take your trip. That's what we call getting ready for the trip. Now, children, some day you are going to take a long trip. You are going to take a trip to heaven to see God. But you have to get ready for that trip. There are lots of things that you have to do before you take that trip. Yes, you have to get ready for your trip to heaven. You can't buy a ticket for heaven either. You have to work for your ticket to heaven. God gives some people a long time to get ready for heaven. Other people have only a short time. Every day that you live on this earth must be spent getting ready for heaven. How do you get ready? Well, I'll tell you just what you have to do. You must say your prayers, go to Mass, go to confession, and receive Holy Communion often. You must be honest, speak the truth, obey your parents. In a word, you must keep God's laws. By doing these things, children, you get your soul ready for heaven. You don't know just when God will want you to take your trip to heaven. Wouldn't it be terrible if you were not ready when God calls you? Get ready every day for your trip to heaven. Get ready for heaven now. End of chapter 2